Yeah, welcome back. After a long hiatus, I'm finally back with episode 8 of Life with Linux on the PlayStation 2. Now, in the previous episode, we were building a Debian 5 web server on the PlayStation 2, and we'll come right back to that, but right now I want to have a look at the HDMI options for the PlayStation 2 and see how far we can push the resolution in the frame buffer for Linux. Now, the PlayStation 2 is quite capable of running at 1080p, but I've never actually seen it, and I think it's about time to finally have a look at have a look at some of these other adapters and I also managed to pick up a SingStar microphone USB kit and a iToy which I don't remember these being as fun as this commercial but we'll have a look at that running inside Linux. This could be a little bit of uh, fun, a bit of nerdy fun. I finally managed to get my hands on a blue retro kit here. I got this model, not the more compact one and the idea will be to connect this up to Linux and hopefully use a Bluetooth wireless mouse and keyboard because to buy one of these Sony mouses or even to try and find one of these light span keyboards that was made for the PlayStation so you could go online or even one of these proprietary Sony connector prototypes that sort of never really came out to the public um, is just impossible so we'll try that as well. So you might remember my video site here where I'm uploading files and videos and images and all that up to the server. I want to run this from the Debian server with SQL and once I've got that set up we'll try this. So no surprises here that 91 by 60 plays back fine. I mean it's like half the resolution but you can see the CPU load here and RAM usage is uh, still pretty good. So let's just ramp it up a little bit. We'll go about double that resolution and uh, see what it's like for CPU load and memory usage. And it's, it's climbing a little bit so I just want to do this periodically so we can see uh, how much it's going to affect the system. So let's just blow it out. Oh yeah look at that. That's that's a slideshow. Let's try out one of these HDMI adapters. Now I've never tried one of these before but I had an old screen kicking around and I thought okay. With the AV to HDMI converter it does give you 720 and 1080p options but another bonus feature for me at least is, is I can now see the desktop on a actual screen or monitor and on my capture device software at the same time which actually makes it a lot easier for me to play around and do things with uh, Debian or Black Rhino Linux but you can see here at full screen it's a, it's a complete slideshow so what about multiple streams you say well check this out I figured out like a relative size that sort of ran pretty smoothly and wondered well if I can do about four or five windows surely it must play back okay so I made this little script uh, in the background there you can see that allows me to watch the videos that are on the video website and they stream pretty well like the the resolution is nice and clear and the playback is pretty good one thing that's quite obvious to me now is that the AV to HDMI converter is simply just that it doesn't upscale it or make it look any better it's still very grainy the signal looks crappy it's it's like if you stretched a small image so it's it's not bad but it's cool that i get to use my screen but other than that it's pretty basic so this ps2 to hdmi converter is pretty much meant to be like the rgb cables and you can see here it kind of displays kernel loader a little bit funny it's kind of got a pinky purple tinge to it And then boom, this sort of happened to me, but this is not any fault of the converter itself as such. It's actually the native resolutions that the screen can use. So let's try out these component cables on my old TV through the RGB component ports here. And you can see here that the kernel is using 26 megabytes in top here. 
but it's not actually because it's using 26 that's all that's been allocated to the 2.6 kernel so we'll go over to HTOP at 1080 and it looks pretty good here and you can see it's actually using 11 megabytes of the 26 allocated by the kernel as the old saying goes can it run Doom? And yes, it can run Doom. And I haven't sped this up or slowed it down or anything. It's pretty choppy, but it does work and it has moments where it sort of speeds up. Naturally, we've got to have a bit of Star Wars. In all the previous videos I'd never really sort of looked into the frame buffer settings that they've got for the GS unit to actually uh, make graphics for the um, PlayStation 2 here but I managed to get them working and got SuperTux working as well as Doom and it's pretty funny because like this is at high res and it's very choppy. And those FPS pretty much say it all. Um, very erratic, sort of nothing consistent and I'm actually trying to move character here I think and uh, yeah you can see it there like it's just not good definitely not worth playing at 1080p but um, we'll go into the frame buffer side of things later on because we will change it in Black Rhino Linux as well I've also set up a bunch of SSH users for benchmarking so you can see here while it's trying to load SuperTux it's pushing it like the CPU is going harder and we're pretty much sort of running out of RAM there. And the last HDMI uh, converter I had was this model but it didn't work so there's not much I can show you about this one but perhaps in the future I'll have a tinker with it and open it up and see what's inside. It's time for the eye toy. Now, I haven't even got the software or games in order to play this damn thing, but I wanted to give it a go in Black Rhino Linux. And I've got to tell you, this thing is high tech and we're even streaming here. Um, and you can see me there sort of waving. It's pretty choppy. I cut back over to my capture device just so you can see a bit better on the um, screen here but there's different sort of filters and features and sort of effects that they built into the modules for uh, using this camera they are pretty slow and it's not very good I mean what do you expect I mean it's uh, USB 1 or 1.1 for the PlayStation 2 and it's pretty basic like you're not going to be doing any full webcamming uh, streaming with it, but hey, that would be a cool idea. Can we stream from it? I thought it would actually be kind of funny if you could capture video footage at least to the uh, <coughs> PlayStation 2. Uh, that's something I'll have to look into another time. But you can see here, the good old Coneheads movie, uh, it's pretty much like a slideshow. And the system is just freaking out. I've got a few things running, but uh, yeah, it's just, it's not very good. So, in conclusion, the HDMI stuff works pretty good. And um, it's definitely higher quality using a component cable setup, which is to be expected. But in the next episode, we're going to get more into the frame buffer side of things and I'll talk a little bit more about the video script here and I've also made a Debian PlayStation 2 installer so this will actually do uh, Lenny and the Squeeze distribution and I've also updated it since the time of this video um, to do Black Rhino Linux. Um, but that's going to be in a future video. So that's all for today guys and hopefully it doesn't take a... F another four months to get a video out. <laughs>